you all. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the south. More specifically, we are in Chestnut Hill, Tennessee, and even more specifically than that, we're in front of the Bush Beans Welcome Center. Now, Bush Beans made here in Chestnut Hill, Tennessee. In fact, I can smell the beans in the air. So yes, we have returned to the Bean Museum here uh, in Tennessee. Now, I've been here a few times, been to the Bean Museum. Uh, a lot of times I will stop here on the way to uh, Gatlinburg driving from my home in North Carolina. But apparently they very, very recently have refurbished and redone the Bean Museum. So I'm very excited to see what they have done with the place. Of course, the Bean Museum brings back very fond memories to me. I remember uh, taking uh, my daughter Annabelle here to the Bean Museum. We were going to Dollywood, traveling over to Pigeon Forge to go to Dollywood. I'm like, okay, but I need to make a few stops first I want to film some things for, for my YouTube channel. And uh, so we stopped here at the Bean Museum and Annabelle was not into it. She did not uh, want to go to the Bean Museum. She just wanted to go to Dollywood. She wanted to go ride roller coasters at Dollywood. She didn't want to hang out with dad at the Bean Museum. Although, I think I think she may have had just a little bit of fun. I think I might have been able to squeeze just a little bit of fun out of the Bean Museum for her. Of course, I love the Bean Museum. I'm always willing to stop by and check out what's going on at Bean Central here in uh, Chestnut Hill, Tennessee. So anyways, let's check out what has changed, what is new, what they have done with the Bean Museum. So please, follow me. So here's the gift shop. It says AJ Bush and Co. General Merchandise, like an old general store that we enter through. Of course, we got some super fun cutouts here in front of the Bean Museum. And there, oh, there's, there he is, the Duke, the dog. He was the mascot of Bush's Bean. Sadly, he passed away several years ago. And apparently, it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just dog actors playing the part. Duke was a real dog. There was only one Duke, and when he passed away, he they actually stopped using him because uh, because he was no longer with us. They didn't replace him. They didn't find a, a fresh new Duke. They uh, they retired Duke the dog. Of course, the gag always in the commercials was uh, he was trying to sell the secret recipe, the secret family recipe for uh, for the bush beans. We miss you, buddy. mentioned you can smell the beans in the air there is the uh, bean factory just right across uh, right across the street here there's that giant can of beans back there makes me wonder if it's if it's full of beans to enter as we walk around to the back side of the general store Enter the general store here. You can see they still have set up here like an old general store. We've got all sorts of old products here behind the counter. May need to stock up on some Knox unflavored gelatin while we're here. Love these old calendars here. I know uh, local businesses would give these out around the mountains. I don't know. I, I've only seen them in the mountains. I don't know where else has uh, calendars like this. Of course, if if you're familiar with calendars like this, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. But yeah, they would be given out by local businesses and they would have like, almost like a, okay, almost a zodiac system to them and farmers would use them to know when to plant, um, when to plant certain crops, depending on the moon cycles and various, uh, various signs. I don't think they call them zodiac signs, but they're very similar to the zodiac. Very interesting, you know, this was a common, common practice in the mountains, which is also a, um, 
you know, a highly religious area as far as Christianity goes. But uh, yeah, they actually use kind of almost like this uh, this pagan uh, pagan uh, system of planting uh, planting things with the cycles of the moon and with the certain uh, symbols. And look at this. This is the tiniest cornhole board I have ever seen. So I guess you you uh, back here and, and toss the beans. Oh, they don't they don't they're very really light. So they don't slide like a real cornhole. Oh, I got one in. Let's give one more try with this one. All right. Ah, oh, dang it. Some bean gift boxes here. Get this uh, bean gift bag for your friends or family. Even comes with a little tiny duke. We have a bean tree here with a stack of uh, stack of bean cans. Well, these are actually zero sugar beans. I don't know the difference between diet beans and zero sugar beans. Yeah, they have all these different beans to choose from. You can definitely stock up on beans while you're here. There's uh, barbecue baked beans, country style baked beans, home style, what the difference between home style and country style is, and then sweet heat baked beans. I guess if people uh, want a little bit of spiciness in their beans. They have vegetarian beans, onion beans, I guess they're sweetened or, or flavored with onion. There's honey sweet, honey sweet beans. There's the Boston, Boston recipe. I guess you, you do hear about Boston baked beans. I think Boston baked beans are, are a candy, but that's probably, probably a whole different thing. Don't they call Boston bean town? And I guess these are the originals here. So man, so, so many flavors of beans. Different varieties of beans. Kidney beans for chili. There's red beans. Here are dark red kidney beans. There's uh, some black beans down here. And then something called Chili Magic. Well, without further ado, let's head into the Bean Museum. See up here it says, Welcome to our bean-filled corner of the world. Now according to this, it says that Bushes actually started out as a tomato canning business here before, I guess, graduating to beans eventually. Let's see uh, some of the tomato canning equipment there. Big, some, some tomato canning machinery here. You see the big wheel is turning. Here we have AJ and Sally Bush here, the founders of the Bush Bean Company. We have their, uh, their family Bible. Very impressive Bible there, the Bean Bible if you will. Here's how you close a can. As you see the tomato can back there and then this machine would be used to press it closed so that uh, the tomatoes inside would not rot or fester. It says that World War I helped the uh, Bush uh, company inadvertently because with all these soldiers going overseas they needed canned vegetables. So they actually increased their production of the canned tomatoes. See the MRE there. I guess that would be the can of tomatoes there, along with some crackers. Of course, you know, not the most delicious meal, but it's uh, designed to be incredibly efficient. And then they actually put a, you can see that packaging there, they actually put a cigarette in that box there for the, the uh, soldiers to smoke after they're eating their uh, dinner of canned tomatoes and crackers. And it does say that when the war ended abruptly, that uh, all the canning contracts were eliminated, so that was actually tough times for the canning business. The original office chair used by A.J. Bush there. And up here, some of their, uh, some of their old uh, products there. Of course, you got the pork and beans, Bush's spaghetti. I don't know, do they still have Bush's spaghetti? And also some chopped kraut, some vegetable soup, and all sorts of different tomato products. Talks about business moving forward. Of course, a lot of you know a lot of cans, a lot of old cans in this museum. It says that they started uh, selling products under the brand Bush's Showboat. I don't know. Does anyone remember the Bush's Show Showboat brand of canned vegetables? Yeah, look at all these cans: turnip greens, sweet potatoes, 
chopped kraut, golden hominy. Now, hominy is a hominy is a type of corn, I believe. See the uh, vintage kitchen here, uh, old stove, and of course more cans, more old cans. They took all the beans and put them in a bean museum. And they charged the people a dollar and a half just to see them. See an exhibit on can openers through the years. As there's two different styles, the level style and the center punch style. I've not seen, well, I'm not sure exactly how these work, I guess. You like jam the knifey part, the pointy part, into the side of the can. And then uh, these have different, I guess like a spike that punches in to the center. I probably, you could probably give me any one of these and I could probably not, not get a uh, can open with them. Uh, so notice this one here, it's the bull's head. There's a little, uh, little bull on the end of it. Oh, and then the back is a bull's tail. Here, roll that beautiful bean footage just heading into the world of their uh, iconic television commercials. Oh, look at this! It's a hidden bean here. This bench actually shaped like a bean. They have some of the classic uh, bean commercials here running on these televisions. No one outside the family knows this restaurant, and I can guarantee you, you'll stay there. And here is the secret family recipe right here uh, some behind this plexiglass. I don't know, maybe I could like punch through that plastic, that uh, plexiglass and steal the uh, steal the secret family recipe and make my own carpetbagger brand beans. Different scenes from uh, the commercials. There we see a pig prop used in one of the commercials, a flying pig used in uh, one of the bean commercials. Of course, one of the classic attractions here at the Bush Beans Museum is the scale where you can find out your weight in beans. So you step on here, it takes your weight, calculates that weight into the weight of beans. So you just gotta step on the scale here and I weigh up 204,800 beans. Doesn't even tell me what type of beans those are. I don't know, can, can, anyone, can anyone do the conversion there? What is my weight in human pounds? You can see a backpack weighs 7,000 beans. A soccer ball weighs 825 beans. A bicycle, 24,700 beans. And Duke, Duke weighs 53,600 beans. It says at Bush's, we believe in the bean. And by the way, if there comes a point in this video where I've said the, the word bean too many times, just leave a comment in the comment section. We have some bean games here. It says, do you know beans? Let's see, we gotta be answer these questions. How many beans do people eat? 12 billion. 23 pounds of canned beans per year. Oh, that's how much an average person eats, 23, uh, 23 pounds. I was just thinking how many beans do people eat in general? What is a bean exactly? Well, that's a very, um, very existential question. The bean is actually an edible seed. So are beans the same thing as like a sunflower seed? That's kind of interesting to think about. What makes beans so special? Um, I'm gonna say they're delicious flavor. <laughs> In addition to being tasty and versatile, the whole lot of goodness in every seed. Beans are a very good source of fiber, protein, vitamins, and carb complex carbohydrates. So we can spin these. Oh, to make hybrid beans. Make a bean that's composed of every other type of bean on earth. There we go. It's a super hybridized bean there. A bean tacto, unfortunately. I'm uh, I'm here by myself, so can uh, you know can't play tic tac toe by yourself. Journey of the bean. How long does it take for beans to grow? Uh, three months. Hundred days. I was close. I was close. I was close. 
when was the first bean grown? That was probably uh, 20,000 years ago. 7,000 uh, 7, BC. And it's a little bit, little bit off. So they were growing beans 7,000 years before Jesus. Here is the bean map. Here shows where all different type of beans come from. Texas, they grow black-eyed peas. Missouri and Arkansas, they, they, they grow purple hull and crowder beans. Looks like in the south, they don't really grow any sort of, any sort of beans. And uh, instead I grew up in Indiana, it does not notate it as growing any kind of bean, although I know they grew, they grew soybeans there. I don't know if Bush sells soybeans, but yeah, look, the entire northeast and the south don't, do not grow any type of beans. They do grow um, kidney beans in Wisconsin, the state I was born in. And oh, look at that, in Minnesota they grow like six different types of bean. So where does Bush get their beans? They're not grown here in Tennessee, apparently. Bush's beans come from 11 different states and Canada. The highlighted areas in the map. Okay, so there's, this doesn't necessarily mean that no beans at all are grown in these states. These are just not where uh, Bush's gets their beans. But they look like, yeah, they get their beans from all over, all over the country. Where are the bean hot spots? 69% of the dried beans here in the U.S. come from four states, North Dakota, Michigan, Nebraska, and Minnesota. So it shows here how Bush is, reclaims water. It says we use water from natural springs and wells on our property. So I guess we turn the wheel here to get that moving. You can see the water washes over the beans and their equipment and then uh, converts to biogas. Oh, there goes the biogas. Over here we have the giant bean can there. And I'm kind of disappointed because you actually used to walk, could walk through this bean. It was like a tunnel of beans, but they've uh, just closed it off now. So no more going through the giant bean can. And right here in the center of the museum, they have this giant golden bean, I guess a monument to beans. And then these pillars are all different uh, types of beans, navy beans in there, kidney beans in there. So I guess they wanted all beans represented alongside this giant bean in the middle. Says, welcome to that beautiful bean aisle. It's a virtual aisle of beans here. I guess we can click on the different beans here. There's a black eyed peas with bacon there. Black eye, oh, okay, so uh, it says uh, there's information on the beans. It says scan to discover what makes these beans so beautiful. I guess you tap on it and then you can use the QR code to learn more about uh, about the beans. Oh, look, there's Duke just poked out there. Sometimes we'll be touched Duke. Oh, what's happened? Beautiful, where's Duke? Okay, so we gotta try to find, now we gotta try to find Duke. Where's Duke? Is he on the roller coaster? Is he on the Ferris wheel? Oh yeah, I see the Ferris wheel there. There's, the cars are different, or, or beans. Also on the carousel. They have bean cans that you can ride. Oh, there's Duke, there's Duke. Found him. Yay, he found Duke, congratulations. So we exit through here. It used to have the, that flying pig would circle the ceiling right here, would be hanging from the ceiling. And then they used to have the, uh, the secret recipe behind lasers right here in the corner. And then we exit back through the gift shop. It's a Duke Christmas ornament and then a bean koozie. You put this on your beer and then people think that you're drinking beans instead of drinking beer. It's, you, you'll trick everyone. And they do sell these decorative cans. These actually do not uh, have any, any beans in them. They are just for decoration. Yeah, it's their, their light. So it's a 250 for an empty vintage can of beans. 
So just for reference, it's about the same price to buy a modern can full of beans as it is to buy an empty can of vintage beans. There's a bush beans blanket there draped over Duke's head. So I guess the blanket, yeah, it's got, it's like a bean can. You can just like uh, slather it on yourself and pretend like you're just laying in a pile of beans. Some Bush's t-shirts here. And actually you can buy a t-shirt in a can of beans. There's no, yeah, it says no beans included right there. There's a, get some on a can of beans for Christmas. They're like, why'd you get me a can of beans for Christmas? And they open it up and then they, then they have a shirt inside, but then they're, at that point, they're like, well, man, I was actually just hungry for beans, and now I just have a t-shirt, and uh, now I gotta go hungry. I think this hat here is my favorite, because it just says beans. Here they sell mints in the shape of a bean can. It does say, sorry, we don't taste like beans. I would definitely purchase these if they did uh, indeed taste like beans. Also, they have some some croc gibbets with uh, with the bean logos on it and uh, a lapel pin. I don't know, do I need a Bush's bean uh, pin for my hat? Saying the word beans so many times has made me hungry. So I figure we'll stop here at the Bush's Best Family Cafe. It's actually attached to the museum. They have their own restaurant and uh, hopefully they serve beans because I'm, I'm in the mood for beans. All right, here we are inside the Bush's Beans Family Cafe. They brought out a sample of the bean of the day. This is a zero sugar added uh, baked bean. So let's try these sugar, sugar, no sugar added baked beans. I guess they only have the natural sugars in there. Mmm, so very good and very sweet. Yeah, I probably wouldn't probably wouldn't know that was a zero sugar added bean there. Mmm. Those beans does taste good after seeing all the beans displays, learning about beans. There's no other way to finish it off than having some beans. Mmm. Okay, so we ordered the uh, special of the day, which is kraut and weenies. Here in a little, little bean pot. Also got some pinto beans and some mashed potatoes. All right, take a look at that delicious hearty meal here at the Bean Museum. So that is kraut, kraut, kraut and weenies. I know they, they sell the, the canned Bush's kraut. Mm. I love, I love sauerkraut. And some hot dogs in there. Mm. So yummy hot dogs. I don't know what kind of hot dogs these are. They taste really good. Some great kraut. But of course, you can't forget about the beans. The pinto beans here. Mm. So good there. A little bit of, little bit of mashed potatoes there as well. Mm. Mm. Everything very, very delicious here. Very, very good. And it looks like today I am a member of the Clean Bean Pot Club. But now it is time for some dessert. Now this is their, uh, this is their specialty here. This is the Pecan Pinto Bean Pie. So there is actually pinto beans in the pie. I'm trying to see if you can actually see the beans, but pinto beans and pecans kind of look alike. So yeah, I don't know if it's gonna how much it's gonna taste like beans, but let's give it a try. I'm gonna give this bean pie a try. I see. I'm trying to taste the beans. I taste the pecans. I taste the sugar, a lot of sweetness. I don't, I don't know. I don't necessarily taste the beans, to be honest. Give another bite here. It's got a very sweet, sugary taste to it. So I don't know if that covers up the beans. I'm here looking for beans. Is that a bean? Is that a bean? 
Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a bean, I think. I think the beans, they, give it, they do give it a little bit of a different consistency, kind of a, a starchy, beany consistency there. It's gonna be quite bad. There's gotta be a bean in there. Mm. But a very, very good pie. Mm. I could definitely taste the bean now. You know, with that big bite, it takes the beany flavor. Kind of gives the pie kind of a, a hearty taste to it. So yeah, definitely interesting and definitely delicious. I don't know if it's just the way the wind is blowing, but that, that bean smell in the air is getting stronger and stronger. So thank you for joining me here today at the Bush Beans Visitor Center and Family Cafe to learn all about the history of beans, bean canning, and the Bush family. And then after that, after, after watching all the, the beans, after seeing all the bean exhibits, you get to eat some beans of our own, both in normal bean form and as well as some bean pie. Which yeah, I was thinking about that bean pie. You definitely, you have to, you have to think about it. But you can definitely taste the beans in there. there. You know, there was little soft beans in there mixed with the pecans, and it was, yeah, it was pretty, pretty delightful. And sometimes you get a big bite, and you could really taste that, those beans in the pie. And yeah, you could. I don't know. I gotta add to the atmosphere. Like I said, you can smell the beans from the bean factory <laughs> across the way. So. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, this was a this is kind of a nostalgic place for me. It just reminds me of when Annabelle was little, when she didn't want to stop at roadside museums. She just wanted to go to uh, to Dollywood and ride ride the roller coasters. And now she is headed off to college, and it all makes me all makes me very sad. I'm sorry. I mean to get, don't get mean to get emotional here at uh, at the Bean Museum. But uh, thank you guys for coming with me. If uh, you like these videos, please, uh, please subscribe. I travel around the country from roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If uh, you like help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. Three dollars or more, we get you a postcard once a month from me to you. We also have some brand new enamel pins in the Etsy shop. We have the the Carpetbagger Monster faced pins. You can buy either the pins individually. We have Mothman, Sasquatch, the Hodag, and a Flying Monkey. Or you can get them all four together for a discounted price. Also still doing cameos, doing personalized birthdays, birthday messages, anniversary message, or just for fun messages. Again, all that information is in the description of that video. And all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag. <laughs>